All right. Well, uh, welcome again to our, our online uh, uh, group meeting that we're, that we're having. We're, we're walking through the book of Ephesians. We'll be in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Um, again, I mean, I know we start uh, all of our lessons like this typically. Uh, thank you for being here. I say being here, I guess. Thank you for, for uh, listening in. Um, but, you know, we really want to encourage you that, that this is not a replacement. It's a great supplement. And uh, if you're sick, we want to know. We want to reach out to you and minister to you and help you in any way we can. Uh, or if you're in a bind and just not able to make it because of weather or, or whatever reason, we're, we're glad you're here with us. But, but this is not a replacement um, of being with the people of God, studying with uh, God's Word, with His people in the same space and building community. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, we appreciate that you're here and that hopefully this is helpful for you. Um, but, uh, okay, so we'll be in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Again, if you would like a book, please let us know. We can, we can mail you one and you can follow along. Uh, again, we'll spend about 10 minutes per, per session around there somewhere. And uh, it's just barely skimming the surface of the beauty of Ephesians. It's one of the best books. I mean, it's God's Word, right? So it's wonderful. But anyways, well, um, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Um, I'll read it, and then we'll just kind of make some observations and walk through it for about uh, 8 to 10 minutes. Ephesians 4, starting in verse 1. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all, by God's grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, it doesn't mean uh, but that he had also descended into the lower regions of the earth. He who descended is the one who has also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. So, living a life worthy of the call of God. Okay? Um, and you can't live a life worthy of the call of God by yourself. It, it, it cannot be done alone. Um, according to this, you, now you can, it's really important that as you walk with Christ, think about our last Bible study, God in you, God in me, God in us. This is the profound mystery. Well, God in you, and, and that's, your walk with the Lord is developed um, with you and with us collectively. This is what I mean by that. Uh, when you spend time reading God's Word in prayerful meditation, and you spend time praying and thinking about the things of God, that ministers to your soul and it helps you surrender what God's doing, right? When I, on my, on my own, pray and read and study and meditate on God's Word, He ministers to my soul. Uh, but it's not enough for us to be separate and do that. We must come together. It is a great thing. It is, it is extremely important. I can't overstate it enough that we have this personal walk with the Lord um, in our own quiet times, if you will, in our own prayer closets, the Scripture clause calls it extremely important. But you cannot live a fully glorified life in Christ isolated from other believers. It just cannot be done. And this speaks of it. It speaks of the unity that we must have in Christ. Um, you know, over uh, uh, several years ago, God really put on my heart a real passion to, to, um, to reach uh, some, some, some folks who were stuck in the demonic, dead religion of Mormonism. Um, for several years, I mean, I mean, up to, you know, over a decade, I visited with my wife about it, how God has just stirred my heart for these folks. Um, this, this, this religion, uh, that is not Christian religion, it's not, um, was started by Joseph Smith, uh, er, I believe early 1800s. Um, and part of it was, uh, his mom and his family, uh, began to live an isolated life. They, they pulled away from the church that they were a part of. They didn't receive, uh, um, uh, insight from other believers. They, they turn their back on the pastor. They begin to live an isolated life. In doing so, it made them vulnerable uh, to some demonic influences. Joseph Smith claimed he had a vision of an angel given a, uh, basically a different gospel, if you will. And we're told in Scripture that this is, that's silly. That's, that's not of God. It's not of God. But 
this religion has, has infected and affected millions who were lost in it, you know? And, and the seed of that religion started with isolation. It's the isolated person. He wasn't a believer. Family was not a believer. But they isolated themselves from the church, from community, from good theology, and began to develop whatever they wanted to on their own. And what came out is a really demonic religion. Okay? Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. C.S. Lewis. Okay? So having humility, being a part of the body, being able to be together is what this is driving at. And the consequences can be dire if we pull ourselves back from living in community. That's why, I mean, we're, we're, we're by God's grace, this is helpful for you, but ultimately cannot be a replacement. I mean, it just can't because we have to live in unity. Um, we have to have theology inside of community with one another to make sure that we're on the right track. Okay? Which is gentleness and patience. Okay? The idea of being patient with one another. You know, being gentle with one another. Um, it says uh, uh, bearing with one another. The idea of carrying one another's load for a season as the Lord ministers to them. You know, some of us have really heavy loads to bear. Um, and we're called to walk alongside brothers and sisters and help them carry that. I mean, it makes God look glorious whenever we can set aside our things in our life for, for a moment and really help our brothers and sisters carry uh, what this role can put on them. And not only that, to be in community where whenever things are loaded up on you, you can have brothers and sisters that can come alongside of you. This is keep, in, keep the unity of the Spirit through peace. Peace. It's the idea of lack of war. Lack of war. Okay, so why would we, why keep the unity through peace? Because we're one. He is one. And, and, and he makes this wonderful list of, of, of the things that, that we are one in and, and who God is. So it's good theology. Who God is is how we, we, we emulate that. God is one, so we are one. If God is one and we are separate, that doesn't make God look glorious. It makes him look confused. And he's not confused. Not at all. Not ever has he ever been confused. So, one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. This is the basis of the mystery. Okay? God in you, God in me, God in us. It's this mystery, this one God. And so we are in it together. God is in you if you're in Christ. God is in me. I'm in Christ. God is in us. This is the building grounds for the mystery. And because of that, we have one body. I'll say it again. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. We are one because He is one. He uh, again, he is not confused, nor is he separated. Okay? So these are done out of the measures of God's gifts. Now, obviously, we have different wirings. Uh, the measure of, 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 sorry, the measure of Christ's gifts, not the measure of yours. Okay? Prayer, goodness, godliness, Bible reading, history, money, family, success, all these things are gifts of Christ's given to you. It's not because we're great. It's because He is. So all these things, all these things that you've received, these spiritual gifts, the, um, again, the, your, your, your history, your parents, your ability to read Scripture, all these things are just um, a wonderful gift that Christ has given you and given me, and we're meant to live together to encourage one another. You know, um, If you know anything about me, I'm not uh, a very detailed person at all, which is interesting that God's called me to be a Bible teacher, but I'm just not when it comes to, to programming and things like that. And we have some folks that are around us that are very detailed, and I need them in my life. You know, I do. You know, if they weren't around, it, it, it just would hurt, you know? God in you, God in me, God in us, okay? The measure of his gifts is the focus, uh, um, not what he required. Psalm 68, the captives uh, are ambiguous, so just fill in the blank. So, who God conquers, and it is tough to talk about the, the captives, but what's clear is, is, is this idea that what he has conquered, who Christ has conquered, uh, he's having a parade that goes before, goes before him of his conquered people, uh, of, of, of the enemies of the demonic powers in which he's shown domination over, um, and he's done it to capture us. You know what I mean? We're his prize. The glory, okay, in me and you, God in you, God in me, God in us. 
So, how deep and wide and, you know, I, I know we can't approximate these things, but interesting, the Pacific Rim to sea level is 21,300 feet. 21,300 feet from the Pacific Rim, the bottom of the Pacific Rim, to sea level. From the Earth to the Moon is 238,900 miles. It's still not even close to the depth of the love and the richness of Christ. Earth to Mars, 140 million miles away. Doesn't even come close to His Majesty. How far, how, how wide is the galaxy? 13.1 billion light years. A light year is how fast can lightning, can light travel in one year? So if lightning were to travel for one year, it would take lightning 13.1 billion miles to stretch across the galaxy. Okay? To lower parts of the earth, to far above the heavens, the defeat of all enemies. It doesn't come close to approximating the wonders of who Christ is and the depths of the glory of God. None of it does. Jesus spent 33 years on earth and he blows everything we know out of the water. The width of the galaxy compared to his 33 years, nothing. The depth of the ocean, drop in the bucket compared to his 33 years. Here to Mars, blink of an eye compared to what he has done in 33 years. Nothing can approximate his height or depth or width of who he is, the wonders of who he is, the fullness of Christ. He is that glorious and He is that amazing. So, you can never show His fullness, but we can show more of it. He's filling us with who He is. And particularly whenever we are unified and and we show humility, again, He's only the one who descended is willing to ascend. When God fills us with who He is and we live a life of unity, it makes Christ look glorious. So, encourage you. You know, I, I, I realize people, people hurt people. I have hurt people. They've hurt me. The idea of exercising forgiveness because Christ has forgiven us and the fullness of who He is. If He can forgive all of my sin, we can walk in unity together. I, I promise you we can. So let the Lord lean on you through, through Ephesians. Um, and we'll pray and we'll end our time together. And we'll look forward to, to, to next week. We'll, we'll, we'll push through Ephesians by God's grace. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much, Lord. And your call to unity is because you are un- your Father, Son, Spirit, one God, unified, never confused. And whenever we are unified together, whenever we forgive one another, now, Father, you've never had to forgive yourself, but Lord, whenever we forgive one another, it makes you look glorious. Your fullness in us will push us and pull us together. God, it is our sin. It's my sin that fights against that. God, be gracious to us, Lord. Enable us to live a life of humility, to live a life of unity, to live a life that is the fullness of Christ. We can never display all that you are, but God, enable us to display more of all that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.